in December during the rut for trophy California mule deer with our good friend Fred Trueblood from Southern California. Fred was really lucky this year. He also drew trophy antelope hunt in central Wyoming. And Fred's hopes are high. He's never killed a big antelope in Wyoming, and this might be his year. He's acting like he's heading somewhere, huh? Yeah. First one short, but heavy. Yeah, that's what that's what I saw at first. Big prong on him though. Boy, well, he does, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he might be broken off, huh? Yes, these are nothing in here worth going after. A couple decent ones, but nothing, nothing too outstanding. What do you think? Let's go find some animals that are workable. All right. After combing the area for a big antelope, we finally found a buck that might have some promise. We spotted about uh, 20 antelope uh, down below us uh, off this little hill here. We're gonna crawl up there and take a peek off and see if we can find a good buck. We didn't see one from a distance, but uh, there's maybe 20 antelope in this group, and so we're gonna sneak up here and see if we can uh, snake one out of here. Let's go, Matt. just down below us. And so we're gonna crawl up and just peek off the end here, see if we can find a buck in this group. Okay, Matt, we got a buck that's, most, most of them are standing this this buck is laying down above the cut bank. This is a pretty good antelope, Matt. This is as good a one as we've seen. Uh, right now he's laying down, but they're milling around a little bit. So we need to do this pretty quick. minutes, the buck gets up to check on his does before Fred can even get set up for the shot. Guy and Matt and I have been chasing antelope for four days here in uh, central Wyoming and today's my last day and I was very fortunate to take this, uh, take this great Wyoming antelope. Been a little uh, dry this summer in central Wyoming so the horn growth isn't quite as much. This is one of the nicer antelope we've seen. He's a little short in the digger but he's got nice hooks in that and we've had a great time. Uh, antelope hunting is, uh, is just one of the funnest friends and family hunts that you can do. And, and uh, we always uh, enjoy it. Uh, I come out every couple of years when I can draw out here in, in central Wyoming and, uh, and the boys and I get after these antelope. It's been fun, it's a fine animal and I'm uh, happy to have him. So we're gonna bounce out to California and check out Fred's mule deer hunt. 
Yeah, we got here a little early, so uh, we probably have uh, 90 minutes of daylight. So we scrambled and and dressed in the in the in the clothes that's on the top of the bag. And we're going to sneak up to a place called Division Creek, where we saw some pretty good bucks before, and uh, we we're up here last week doing a little scouting and see if we can uh, catch a big boy out this evening. Good buck down here. He's not, you know, not a first day buck. Four three. He's fork kind of shallow on his G2s, but he's squared up real nice. Nice looking deer. Joining Fred on his mule deer hunt are some of his longtime hunting buddies. These guys have been hunting in this area since they were merely kids, and it doesn't take long for them to begin turning up bucks. This buck here, the more we look at him, the better he looks. Big, squared up. He's a little he's a little wider than what I thought in the beginning. He's probably 26 or so. But he is, uh, as the film shows, he's uh, pretty active, <laughs> making new bucks. If somebody doesn't take him, we might come back and take another look at this boy in a couple days. Early the next morning, the guys continue their search for a big buck. Although there's no shortage of deer, Fred has been waiting for a very long time to draw this tag, and he's being very selective. He's just a little crabby. We've got some more looking to do. We're trying to find the deer in here, so we're gonna go up on this cinder cone that's in front of us so we can look down into these little swales and these little draws and then see if we can find another big buck in here but if we get up high and look down into it and then we can also look up into these other benches As the plans always uh, seem to evolve, you you get halfway into a plan and then you then you change it. We split up and uh, we were going to go up high on the cinder cone and looking in the back country. And Daryl went a little lower and uh, saw two bucks and another buck that we didn't get a good look at. And so we changed our plan and now we're going to go go lower where most of the deer where we've been seeing most of the deer. So the trek is on. Let's go kill a big one. resident of Southern California and has been applying for this tag for almost 20 years now. Let's catch back up with Fred as he searches the sagebrush for a big California deer. We're right back in this uh, little canyon where we saw uh, one of the big bucks yesterday. And uh, we can't seem to find him this morning, but he's with does and the does will stay down. And so he's in here somewhere. And uh, if we don't see these deer, then there's a little saddle behind us. And we're going to go up in that saddle where we can look at both these valleys. And we'll find them in here somewhere. There's a big flat rock about 50 yards in front of us. He's on the other side. If you look right over the top of that flat rock, he's kind of looking this way. He's a three. Something's wrong with his left side. He's 
need to find his older brother. Well, for a fleeting second, mm -hmm. we thought we found him. Not bad. It's a big, heavy horn deer, but he's broken, and he's just not as big as the other one. But they could be brothers. Mm -hmm. They the same. The yeah, same symmetry. Symmetry. Yeah. Well, we're uh, here in the eastern Sierra Nevada, hunting big mule deer. And I'm really lucky to have uh, two of my longtime hunting partners. Uh, we've been hunting maybe, I don't know, 40 some years together. Yeah. Uh, Daryl Coe and Jim Reiner. You can see the snow behind us, it just hasn't uh, isn't enough to push the deer down. So we're hunting the deer that are already down. And we're doing this today because they have to leave tomorrow. And uh, if we don't take a nice mule deer here in the next couple hours, maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Fred's buddies had to cut out a bit early on the hunt, leaving Fred in the sagebrush to go it alone, searching for a big mule deer. With the rut still in full swing, Fred begins turning up the same bucks over and over again. And with the lack of snow in the area, Fred's prospects of finding a true desert monster are starting to fade fast. We saw this little, uh... Actually, it's a pretty good three-point in these trees a couple days ago. So we're, we got a pretty good look at him today. And, and uh, we got a you know committee of friends who have uh, looked at this deer. So we're, Matt and I are going to get a little closer. And if we like him, we're going to take him. He's a three-point, but he's about, about the heaviest three-point that we've seen. And he kept walking back and forth and staying behind this bush so we couldn't shoot him. And so uh, we rolled his feet in the air, and uh, I guess Matt will go down there and uh, take a look at him. We're wrapping up this hunt in uh, eastern Sierras with this great uh, heavy horn three-point. Matt and I put a fun stock on him. We had to uh, work through uh, about six or seven does up on top who were more curious about us than afraid. And so that took us a little while to get to them, but that was fun. And I've had a lot of great friends up here helping and, uh, and we've, had a, we've had a really good time. And so this uh, fun, heavy three point uh, ends a great hunt here in the Eastern Sierras. And remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next week right here on Eastman Hunting TV.